the energy that they send ping off, which is meant to be identifying um, enemy craft, be they um, you know, marine or, or, or air-based um, platforms, um, uh, they, they can't actually see through the wind farm. We're here talking about um, wind turbines. Um, tell us what the problem is with wind turbines and why defence chiefs are thinking about wind turbines. Well, wind turbines are, particularly the ones that are, um, especially the ones that are um, offshore, are becoming increasingly large with very, very long uh, turbine blades. Those turbine blades are what we would call shiny, um, so they reflect uh, radar energy um, very, very well. Um, and the problem uh, with that is there are you know, a system of uh, ground-based radar stations that the RAF uh, run, and they are looking uh, all around the country, but um, the big problem is then it's the ones that are looking east. The energy that they send, ping off, which is meant to be identifying um, enemy craft, be they um, you know, marine or, or, or air-based um, platforms, um, uh, they, they can't actually see through the wind farm. The wind farm is so shiny that a lot of the energy is coming back. So if you imagine uh, an operator of those radar systems looking at their screen, at one point they'll see this big path, if you like, that is just white. And that is the energy coming back from the wind farm to the, to, to the radar system. So the challenge there is that um, the, an enemy fleet uh, or... Uh, aircraft could be coming from that direction to look at or attack um, the UK. Um, so what we need to do uh, is to, uh, a combination I would say of you know, improving, this is what the, the DASA MOD RAF um, radar mitigation programme was all about, um, is we need to, uh, a combination of improving the radar um, capabilities, the, the hardware that, and software that is used at, at those ground stations. Um, but that's not enough. We need to do that in combination with a reducing the energy that's coming back at, at, at the source, if you like, um, which is within the radar um, turbine blades themselves. And that's what we've um, been um, challenged to do and succeeded to a certain extent. Um, and just, just going back, I mean, radar bounces off all sorts of things. If you've, you've got a radar screen, it's receiving pings back from cliffs, from houses, from lots of things you're not interested in. And it's perfectly capable of coping with that. And you can use software to, to remove all of that radar clutter. Why can't we do that with wind turbines? Why is this even a problem? A wind, a wind farm is exactly where, where it always is. So you just tell the radar, ignore the signal of the wind farm. Well, you, 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 can, you can do that, but you've got, a big, you've got then a big hole in, in, your, ra in your radar, the, the, um, uh, the picture you're trying to look. I mean, we're, we're, we're talking about systems that are looking out to sea, right? So there's not a lot of stuff there, okay? But if you see some, you know, big boats moving your way or aircraft that you don't recognise, then, of course, you know that you need to um, send up the jets to go and have a look. Um, but if you can't actually see them coming from behind the wind farms or through the wind farm, then you're blind. Yeah, yeah. And so has this has this caused problems so far in the, I mean, you mentioned that the MOD has a competition for people to find solutions for it. So presumably this has already been a place where energy security and defence security have bumped up against each other. Yeah, sure. I think there's a, um, a, a need for, in my opinion, depending on, depending on your politics, I think there's a need for... Uh, wind energy um, and for us to uh, have a substantial, continue to have a substantial uh, contribution from wind energy, we need to site those uh, wind farms in places that are best in terms of wind um, and uh, being close to shore so there's a, um, you know, an easier build if you like um, and the distance obviously to, trans to uh, get the energy to come back from the wind farms to, um, to shore. Now, if the energy industry could put them wherever they wanted, um, that, would be, that would be fine, but they can't because there is this challenge um, from the Ministry of Defence um, that you can't just go and put any wind farm wherever you want because we need to be able to look east and see the threats coming through. So it is a constant, um, it is a battle, 
Um, but I think it's something that particularly the, um, the Defence and Security Accelerator that ran this programme uh, has identified that, you know, that there, there can be a solution and uh, we were grateful to be deemed part of that solution in the, in the phase two and then we're now, we're now part of the phase three work which is aiming to put um, our materials uh, inside those wind farm turbine blades to absorb um, a lot of that energy. So let's talk about what you're doing um, and what your particular solution to this is. What, what, what is it? And is it, is it, in my sort of understanding, is you're making stealth wind blades in the same way as we make stealth aeroplanes? Um, to a degree, but we're not making the blades. We're, we're material scientists. Um, so we're making, uh, we have a, a, what we call an ink, um, which is you know, a, a liquid. Um, that has a range of different um, carbons um, in it that in combination with other um, sort of our sort of secret source elements um, is very very good at absorbing radar energy and this is technology we've worked on with the Ministry of Defence with the Department of Defence in the US and then again as part of this um, this uh, wind farm radar uh, mitigation program for wind farms we've also put this same technology um, into drone skins as well. So the idea being that it's inside, as it's inside the wind farm turbine blade, not on the outside, we can do the same with aircraft, so that we're actually absorbing the energy within, within the system. Um, a lot of stealth is done by shaping of wings, etc., but we don't have that um, uh, opportunity uh, with wind farm turbine blades, to, to my knowledge, because they need to be efficient for their key job rather than uh, looking, you know, having a shape to them, which is stealthy. Um, and how well does this work, and what does it mean for what the uh, radar operator can see on his or her screens? Because it doesn't seem intuitive that absorbing radar energy means that you can actually see the thing beyond the wind turbine. But explain how it, how it means hopefully you can. Well, so if you imagine that... Um, uh, the energy hitting the, ray, but the, the, um, the turbine blade is reflected back, the majority of it is actually reflected back, and then you get this white noise, like I said, that's coming back onto the screen. Okay? So if we absorb some of that energy, less of that energy is coming back. So you're you'll you'll giving a clearer picture for the radar systems to be able to look through. Yeah, yeah. And how well does it work? Where, it's been, where has it been tested and on what? Well, so we've te our, our technology has been tested um, at uh, uh, radar um, fields, if you like, where there is sophisticated equipment to, to test it, but it hasn't been tested on full um, size blades as yet. Um, but there's no reason why it wouldn't work exactly the same. In terms of the performance, uh, we, can, we can reduce the, um, the energy coming back by up to or beyond 10 decibels, which is a significant uh, reduction that would give um, the radar systems a, a better capability, a better um, opportunity to look through, look through the wind farms. Yeah, yeah. And very briefly, look, you're one of the companies that the MOD has said, yeah, we're interested in your technology, we want to take it through. Um, it seems likely, and correct me if, you're wrong, if I'm wrong, that probably there'll be a combination of approaches that'll be taken. Um, what are the others um, that, that you know of and, and how, how might they work? Yeah, I think that there's, um, I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not an expert on the, the radar systems, hardware or software, but I think there's been a, uh, efforts over you know, many years since wind farms have you know, been out in the North Sea um, to improve the radar systems themselves. So that's one thing with improved software, hardware. Um, that, that's, that's one path. The other path um, is to have technology actually sat on the wind farms, which is what the great business called um, LiveLink do. I think that you've, you've spoken to them in the past, Tom. Um, great business, great idea. Um, but the other thing that must happen is to have the material solution to absorb that energy um, so less goes back. So they're the, they're the three parts that, are, that um, I'm aware of. Yeah, yeah. And when do you see our sort of radar-proofed wind turbines going out there so that we can still spot the Russians with their nefarious plans? come to get us? I can't see any reason why our technology is not integrated in, into all new turbine blades that are out of going out to the North Sea and elsewhere. I think the solution is there. I think it's been proven pretty well. Um, I would like to, like to think that it's actually um, you know, in the farms in the next couple of years. But you know, industry can be slow to change. 
Um, uh, so we have to we have to wait and see. We, we've, I think we've done our job. We can mass produce our materials. Um, we know that they can go into the wind farm turbine blades without causing any you know deterioration effects um, mechanically or, or, or otherwise. Um, and they're very very easy to put actually you know inside the blades without um, too many additional steps and costs. And the materials really intrinsically um, are. are are low cost. This is not an expensive exercise. So I can't see a reason why the technology shouldn't be adopted uh, immediately.